Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to use a Gordon dividend model to estimate the present value of a company's stock price and also to use this to compute the rate of return required of a company's equity. So first we'll write out the formula and then we'll come back to the ExxonMobil Corporation stock and apply the formula to this. The Gordon dividend model form basically says that if a company is paying, let's say, a dividend of um, like today, let's say it paid a dividend of, uh, say, $5. Uh, this is usually per year, right? Now, if the company's dividend is growing at a growth, at a growth rate of, uh, let's say, 5%, and let's say you have the company's uh, equity, uh, which has a riskiness that's implied by a rate of return of 7%. That means if you were to put the money in, ba in bank, you might get... Um, you know, a return of say two or three percent, because bank deposits are very uh, low risk. There is almost no chance of the money being lost. But let's say if you're going to put this money in a stock, you demand a higher rate of return for that, and that's reflected by the seven percent here. And let's say today's price is P zero for the stock. Okay, so as a matter of fact, for ExxonMobil, the price for today is uh, ninety four dollars approximately. So. Another way to look at today's price is basically the present value of all future dividends. That is div one, that is dividend paid at the end of the first year plus div two plus and so on up to div. In reality, this is basically some really uh, distant time into the future. So another way to look at that is basically to say equals, uh, you're basically saying div zero. If you assume that this is what the company pays every year, so you basically assume div1, div2, and so on are all equals div0. So you're basically saying div1, 0, you have to discount it by the equity return, that's this figure here, the return demanded of equity, um, div0 by 1 plus re square for the second year, plus and so on, it just keeps increasing. So that uh, cash flow at uh, infinity is really essentially very close to zero, right? So now the additional complication is that this dividend is also growing at a growth rate of 5%. So you need to multiply this by one plus G over here, and you need to multiply this by one plus G square and so on and so forth, which simplifies to div zero times one plus G divided by R E minus G. And this assumes that the rate of return is greater than the dividend growth rate. So let's now use this in the context of ExxonMobil. So we need information on how much dividend did ExxonMobil pay in the years 2011, 12, and 13. To do that, if you go to the Yahoo site and go all the way down to cash flows here under financials, and uh, if you scroll all the way down, it will tell you how much dividend was paid by the company. Since this is a cash outflow for the company, it's, it's depicted as a negative number here within parenthesis. So here are the actual dividend figures that I've just entered. Now, so what is the implied growth rate based on these dividends? The implied growth rate is this divided by this minus one, 7%. Actually, you can also change the percentage. Uh, you can put some 7.3 if you want. And the implied growth rate here is this divided by this minus one. So this is 12%. Now, here's a slight problem. The dividend is not increasing in a smooth manner. And that's reality. A lot of companies will not be paying flat dividends every time. They'll, the dividends will fluctuate. So maybe the average is kind of in between seven and 11, maybe 9%. Another way to compute this is to use what is known as the compound average growth rate, CAGR. So let's say if the initial dividend was div zero and the final dividend was, it increased to div one, right? So, or, or div uh, two in this case. So basically what we're saying is div zero grew at some growth rate G over two years. So that's basically this div zero times one plus this growth rate squared equals div two. So the growth rate then is div two by div 
0 square root minus 1. Coming to the Excel spreadsheet here, so the way you would compute the compound average growth rate is basically to take the final dividend divided by the initial dividend and you press F2 to edit this formula. You want to raise this to the power 1 by 2 minus 1. So that yields average dividend growth rate of 9.5%. You could go to the NASDAQ uh, website where they provide dividends for any given company for the past several years. So if you look at Exxon's dividend history, it has paid a dividend of 69 cents per quarter most recently. And further down, it has paid 44 cents per quarter in around 2000, 2001 thereabouts. So we could kind of take these figures and estimate the compounded average growth rate for the dividends. So what I do here is I do 0.44 times 4, that is $1.76 per year. And more recently, it's 0 0.69 times 3 plus 0 0.63, about $2.70 per year. So here, the implied growth rate is, implied compounded average growth rate is um, this divided by this raised to the power of 1 by 14 because you're talking about 14 years of compounded growth here minus 1 so that's 3 percent so in the long run it looks like Exxon Mobil dividend has been growing at a more modest 3 percent which makes sense because this is the typical growth rate of the entire economy and since the entire economy runs on gas you would expect that this is probably a more typical growth rate than this here so with this new information, we now have one piece of the puzzle. We have the growth rate here. So it's instead of 5%, it's 3%. And I just edited these numbers here. So the dividend is actually 2.7, $2.70, and the growth rate is 3%. And we assume a rate of uh, return of 7%. And with this information, we are now ready to compute the price of um, ExxonMobil stock. And the price is basically the dividend times 1 plus this growth rate divided by 7% minus this growth rate. So that would be, and I just need to change this to dollars. So $71.45. Now assuming that the rate of return that we require for ExxonMobil is 7%. And I can change this formula here to that also instead of saying 7% I'll just point to this form this rate of return here so if on the other hand if you think ExxonMobil is less risky than the 7% return would suggest uh, if you think it's only say 4% risky it probably merits a, a much higher price and compare all this to today's price $94 right so compared to that this looks a lot attractive but if you think it merits a 7% return then it's worth a lot less so that's how you would compute the price today's price of a stock based on its projected future dividends now supposing you have the price and you would like to compute the implied re in other words now instead of putting a formula here we're just going to say today's price is 94.89 so i'm just going to say 95 dollars and so what would be this what would be this computed value of re to do that let's take a look at this formula here so we turn this formula around so r e will now equal div 0 by p0 times 1 plus the growth rate plus the growth rate so i just took this re minus g over here and p0 over here so div 0 by p0 that's this times 1 plus g times 1 plus g and then you have this g which was here which needs to be brought over here which is what i did here so the new formula will give us the value of re if we assume the current value of p0 to be given um, div divided by the price times 1 plus the growth rate uh, plus the growth rate okay so that's six percent so let me change this so around six percent so if you assume today's price to be a fair price for ExxonMobil then that implies that its equity has 
this level of risk, 6.03%, uh, should be the cost of its equity. And you can use this cost of equity in your weighted average cost of capital or VAC calculations, right? Um, which is the subject of my previous video, so you can view that. So that was it. I hope this is helpful. Have a nice day. Thank you.